No, this, this week, for example, we have three more headers. Oh. We have the woman that's an FCA. We have, yeah, we have uh, somebody from the House of Mexico, you know, and then we have an immigration, a uh, woman in immigration. So, and so do it. Okay, come on, Welcome back home. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to be here. Should we start this one? Do it. 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 Do I want to say good afternoon and I want to welcome everybody to Chicano Park. It is really great to be back home. It was right here where I grew up. This is where my single mother with a third grade education raised me and my sisters. And to be honest, I wasn't a stellar kid. I got into my good amount of trouble growing up poor and I really didn't have much hope for my future. But seeing my mother work uh, her fingers to the bone, cleaning homes and taking care of the elderly every single day, instilled in me a sense of duty to make things better for the people of San Diego and here in Barrio Logan. When I first got elected all the way through my time as a leader of the California State Senate, Barrio Logan in San Diego has always been in the back of my mind. I worked to create more parks statewide because I grew up playing on these concrete streets made of asphalt and cement. I passed legislation that increased worker protections, access to quality education, no matter your income, and clean energy, and climate goals that would spur jobs in our communities like these, and clean up the air that we breathe every single day. And I also passed legislation to protect 
are immigrant families, just like the ones that are living right here in Barrio Logan. Senate Bill 54, the California Values Act. Immigrant families like mine and the ones I grew up with, working mothers and fathers and their children who still live right here deserve a shot at the American dream. Just like many past generations of immigrants that came to our country and made it even greater. So I've come here to Barrio Logan, to Chicano Park, to my childhood home to deliver a very important message. Now, three, nearly three years ago, Donald J. Trump descended from that escalator in Trump Tower. His run for the presidency began with a series of lies about immigrants and the relationship between the United States and our neighbor to the South. In recent weeks, California Republicans have seized on the president's lies and divisive rhetoric. What's happening in a handful of Southern California cities is truly disheartening. These city council members and supervisors aligning themselves with the president are simply on the wrong side of history. Especially the San Diego County Board of Supervisors who recently casted their vote to sue their home state, the great state of California, over my legislation, Senate Bill 54, the California Values Act. Working to bring back the ghosts of Proposition 187 back to life. Now, I'll get to the facts about how this law actually works, but I want to quickly address the root of the President's appeal to the worst part of ourselves, something that California Republicans are now working to capitalize on. This week, an important study came out showing that Trump supporters were not driven by a sense of economic anxiety, as many media outlets led us to believe, but rather they were motivated because they feared a sense of social displacement. Here you had a candidate in Donald Trump blaming everything on immigrants, on people of color, stoking racial resentment. This study, which will be articulated in a few moments, had these voters believing that their social place in our community, in our state, in our nation would be displaced. I honestly sympathize with the feeling of uh, social displacement. Growing up in Barrio Logan, I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. But this is not how California, this is not how America works. This is not the sentiment that we want our children to believe. We have learned over generations that when we integrate our immigrant communities, our economy does better. Our neighborhoods are safer and our culture becomes richer. Every kid, no matter their race, no matter their gender, their sexual orientation, class, or documented status, should feel that this country belongs to them because then they feel invested in making it much better. Instead of dividing our people over immigration status or race, wouldn't it be better if we work together to grow our economy so all of us can benefit? No immigrant wants to take anybody's job. They want to work alongside each and every one of you to create more economic opportunities. Immigrants have not just founded many large companies, but millions of immigrants have founded very small businesses as well. They're almost twice as likely to start a business as native born as the native born population. Now opponents of Senate Bill 54 have weaponized, have weaponized false information about legislation that actually makes our communities safer. The San Diego County Board of Supervisors, led by the chair, Kristen Gaspar or Gaspar, would have you all believe that the sky is falling, that immigrants in this city are in fact wrecking havoc. But when you look at the numbers, this county, the great county of San Diego, is actually considered to be safer than the United States as a whole. We are here today to simply to provide some facts. You'll hear from Professor Wong that sanctuary cities have a lower average rate of violent crime than non-sanctuary cities. There is nothing about this law, let me be very clear, there's nothing about this law that blocks cooperation when it comes to violent felons. I grew up here around gang violence and I more, and I more than anybody want violent criminals off our streets. But enlisting local police in routine immigration enforcement drives law-abiding immigrants deeper 
into the shadows. When immigrants are too afraid to report crimes in their communities, we are all less safe. That's why many local law enforcement leaders support Senate Bill 54, including my police chief, the police chief of the second largest police department in America, LAPD Police Chief Charlie Beck, and other sheriffs across the state. But the bottom line is this. We will not squander our precious public safety dollars to tear hardworking families like the ones here apart. We will not detain our dreamers or deport law-abiding people who have helped make California's economy the sixth largest in the world, not in a great state like California, and certainly not on our watch. There is no question that this president is fighting a losing battle. In his first year of his presidency, the federal courts struck back with his racist Muslim ban. Then when he wanted to pull the Department of Justice funding from sanctuary cities, threatening our public safety, the courts once again told him, no way. And even with the bipartisan support for DACA, he tried to shut down the program. This week, the federal court handed Trump another crushing loss. He should get used to it, because here in California, we are on the right side of history. And Senate Bill 54 is on the right side of the Constitution of the United States of America. Mr. President, as well as Ms. Gaspar from the County Board of Supervisors from San Diego, Ms. Jacobs, as well as Mr. Horn, we will see you in a court of law. What you have succeeded in doing is spending taxpayer dollars from the people of California, wasting those taxpayer dollars to join Donald Trump in a lawsuit against your home state, the state of California. That is nothing less than the betrayal of your home state and the people of California, wasting taxpayer dollars in a lawsuit that they will lose in a court of law. You see, I wrote this measure with the former Attorney General of the United States of America, Eric Holder. I won't put a measure out there for the public knowing that it is unconstitutional. Because here in California, we enforce the law based on objective measures, not fear. We pursue justice to make our communities stronger and safer, not weaker by stoking division and hate. President Trump should visit this neighborhood, as well as the County Board of Supervisors from San Diego, and not this pretend wall down in San Isidro and in Tijuana, to see the humanity that lives here, the amazing cultural tapestry, the beautiful display of amazing people who have, make, who have helped make San Diego a great county. This is the definition of what makes this nation of immigrants the best country in the world. I just want to say a couple things in Spanish really quickly, and then we'll get on with our guest uh, who will be speaking here today. Buenas tardes. Estoy aquí en el corazón del histórico Parque Chicano, el epicentro de la conciencia cultural, artística y política de nuestra comunidad. Quiero hoy denunciar el voto nefasto de la Junta de Supervisores que rechazó mi ley, la Ley 54, comúnmente conocido como Estado Santuario, el Acta de Valores de California SB 54. Porque por eso estoy aquí en el barrio donde crecí, Con tres votos a favor y uno en contra, se dio paso al odio. Este voto es una cortina de humo con fines políticos de los republicanos para tratar de reelegirse. La presidenta de la Junta de Supervisores de San Diego, Kristen Gaspar, Gaspar, quien está detrás de esto, está postulándose por el Congreso por sus fines electorales, utilizando al inmigrante como el chivo expiatorio por todos los males económicos y sociales. Esta es una estrategia, una estrategia regresando a la politiquería faída de la proposición 187, que ha arruinado al Partido Republicano. Lo que la Junta de Supervisores votó y aprobó fue permitir a la policía detener a mujeres y sus niños, que va a la escuela...
One, two, three. There we go. Las pilas. We need renewable energy. One, two, three. We're gonna hold this one. Okay. Let me just finalize. Este, déjame finalizar este, lo siguiente. Que quede muy claro. Tarde o temprano lograremos una victoria para nuestra gente trabajadora aquí en el condado de San Diego. Lo que hizo la supervisora es utilizar al inmigrante como el chivo expiatorio por todos los males este, políticos y econó económicos, utilizando, utilizando sus fines electorales como candidata para el Congreso. Qué insulto para nuestra comunidad latina inmigrante aquí en el condado de San Diego. Porque va a gastar el dinero de los votantes y los contribuyentes en contra esta demanda jurídica en contra de su propio Estado. Eso, de mi punto de vista, eso, de mi punto de vista, esto se debe mandar un mensaje a los votantes en su distrito de no votar en favor de su candidatura como este, candidata. Bueno, con eso, with that, it is my uh, great honor to introduce uh, not just a friend, but a committed public servant, someone who I had the honor to serve with in the California State Assembly uh, when he was an incredible leader uh, in the California State Assembly. Uh, when he was a Republican at the time, we worked in a bipartisan fashion to take on very complex issues, to find a bipartisan solution that was common sense, that would improve the quality of life of all Californians, regardless of your political affiliation, Rep Republican or Democrat. He's a sensible uh, 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 public servant who finds solutions to improve the human condition for all individuals, again, regardless of who you are and regardless of where you come from. And, you know, I know this is not a place and time today, but I just want to announce that I announced, uh, or at least I told him today, that I am uh, definitely uh, endorsing him to be the next county board supervisor from San Diego. He's someone who, whose fresh voice is needed here for the people of San Diego County. It's with great pleasure that I bring to my good friend, the former assembly member, now candidate for the county board supervisor for San Diego, Nathan Fletcher. Nathan Fletcher. NASCAR pit crew guy. Got that change quick. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. And I, I want to say to Senator DeLeon, we want to say welcome home. We want to say welcome home. And uh, we love uh, anytime we can see you uh, here in San Diego and, and see what you're doing. Uh, it's an honor and a, and a privilege for ours. And, you know, I, I served with Senator DeLeon when he was Assembly Member DeLeon. As he mentioned, we served together in the Assembly. And I want to say this about Kevin DeLeon. This man gets up and he fights. He fights every single day. And when he has a fight and, and maybe doesn't get all the way, he just reloads and he comes right back. Because he has an approach where eventually uh, justice will prevail and right will beat wrong. And we worked together when we were in the assembly, but I'll tell you more than working together, I watched, I watched Kevin DeLeon. And I listened to the stories of, of what he grew up with in San Diego and the struggles that he, he overcame in his life and a tremendous testament to what is possible when you have equity and when there's opportunity. And serving with Kevin DeLeon, it, it shaped me and it changed me. It made me a better person. Uh, it made me more committed. Uh, it made me have a greater understanding of so many different communities. Um, and Kevin, I can just say you've had an impact and an influence on me, uh, which I am eternally grateful for. And I'll tell you that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that Kevin DeLeon becomes the next U.S. Senator from the state of California. We're going to campaign for him. We're going to organize for him. We're going to go out and tell the story because this is who we need fighting for us. This is who San Diego needs fighting for us. This is who California needs fighting for us. And this is who...
There we go. So Kevin, myself, and a whole lot of us here in San Diego are on your team, and we're rooting for you, and we're pulling for you, uh, and we're excited to see you win. Now here locally, stepping aside from what we need in the U.S. Senate and nationally, here locally in San Diego, we need a board of supervisors that is going to stand up to Donald Trump, is going to stand with our immigrants, and is going to fight for our San Diego and our California values. You know, my, my wife and I live in City Heights. My wife, who helped jockey this bill through the Assembly, uh, she helped jockey this bill and get it through the State Assembly. We live in City Heights, where you see the value of immigrants. You see the fact that, it, as was mentioned, you're going to hear about immigrants commit crime at a much lower level. If you want to reduce crime, there's a really simple solution. You increase immigration because you see the crime rates lower. We see our immigrants are our hardest working members of our community. They're the most committed. They're a part of our culture. They're a part of who we are in San Diego. And what the Board of Supervisors has done is immoral. It is inconsistent with our values. It is wrong. If they wanted to take action on this issue, then what they should have done was joined the state of California in fighting against the Trump agenda. Because we know, look, I'm a professor at UCSD. I have a student who came up, a DACA recipient, a dreamer. And she said, maybe I have status for the foreseeable future, but she said, my parents don't. A mother and a father who have lived here for more than 20 years, who work multiple jobs in the service economy, who pay their taxes, who go to their church, who are active in their community, who have children who are honor grads at our top universities, and they're afraid to leave their house. They're afraid to go to the grocery store. They're afraid of what might happen, not if they do something wrong, but if someone rear-ends them and a law enforcement official approaches them. That's wrong. My mom as a child, my mom ran shelters for victims of domestic violence, for women who'd been victims of sexual assault. And we don't provide protection for women who've been victims of domestic violence because they're white. We provide it for all of them. But what happens when you have local law enforcement doing a job that's not their job? What happens to that woman who's been a victim? She's not going to call. She's not going to get justice. She's not going to get protection. What happens if it's your child who's the victim of a crime and the witness to that crime is an immigrant? What happens when they're afraid to go to law enforcement? Law enforcement has a bond and an obligation to protect and serve all who are here. And we break that bond when we side with the Donald Trumps of the world. We break that bond. In so many ways, this is a moral issue. And it's one that the San Diego County Board of Supervisors got wrong. And that's why we need change. We need to change the hearts and minds of those who are out there who understand the impact and the power of the immigrant spirit. And if their hearts and minds can't be changed, then we need to change them. And here in an election year, we have an opportunity to do that. Uh, and so I'm honored to be here uh, with friends. I'm honored to be here with Senator De Leon. I appreciate his tireless leadership. This is someone who has taken tremendous heat and flack and criticism and death threats, all to do the right thing. And Kevin, I'm honored that you're out there fighting. I'm honored you're going to continue to serve. And we look forward to you having a long, a long, long career uh, representing all of us in the state of California. So thank you very, very much for leadership and your work. Thank you, buddy. Nathan, uh, thank you very much for your kind words, and, and trust me when I say this, that uh, your dynamic uh, political leadership is much needed on the County Board of Supervisors to bring about uh, moderation, uh, political maturity, and, and, and strong leadership that's needed. Obviously, that's vacant uh, today. Well, we need strong leaders to deal with very complex issues. Uh, we don't need weak leaders that uh, uh, try to figure out uh, the uh, race to the bottom to divide our communities, but rather to bring our communities together, which I want to thank you very much. Let's get up for Nathan Fletcher one more time.
Uh, next, I have uh, an academic from the University of California at San Diego who's going to talk about uh, real facts, not alternative facts, uh, not fake news, uh, empirical evidence that is peer-reviewed and peer-tested uh, by his colleagues. Uh, when he brings data points, uh, these are data points that are unfortunately and sadly uh, misrepresented, skewed, or altogether uh, not articulated to the larger community. But with that, let me bring to the Professor of Political Science at the great University of California at San Diego. That is Dr. Tom Wong. Dr. Tom Wong. Okay, so I got a tough job. This is Senator Kevin DeLeon, Nathan Fletcher, and I am here to try to make data sexy. So I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna sort of jump right into it. So there's a lot that's said about the effects of sanctuary policies. So we see President Trump's tweets about how they breed crime and other sort of similar sentiments. But let me be very clear. There is currently no data that exists that shows that there is more crime in sanctuary jurisdictions than in non-sanctuary jurisdictions. In fact, it's just the opposite. And so you don't necessarily have to take my word for it, but you can actually get a data set from Immigration and Customs Enforcement where they are saying, here are the counties that are sanctuary and here are the counties that aren't. And so the analysis that I did last year with some sort of statistical bells and whistles showed that there are 35.5 fewer crimes in sanctuary counties compared to comparable non-sanctuary counties. The statistical bells and whistles are about making apples to apples comparisons. So to reiterate, 35.5 fewer crimes per 10,000 people in sanctuary counties compared to comparable non-sanctuary counties. Not only is crime lower in sanctuary counties, but economies are also stronger. So what I saw was higher median household income, lower poverty, fewer children under the age of 18 who were receiving public assistance. And so the reason why I looked at those sort of indicators is because we know how deportation can affect families. We know that there are an increased number of mixed status families across the United States and especially here in California. So you imagine that U.S. citizen child of that undocumented parent and that family being split apart. The economic data make clear that not only are economies stronger in sanctuary uh, jurisdictions, but by keeping families together, that uplifts the entire local economy. It takes the sort of strain off of local purses by letting families essentially thrive and not have to live under the threat of deportation. And so we actually see these trends in the data. But more recently, I was able to do additional research that answered a difficult question. Why is there lower crime in sanctuary jurisdictions compared to non-sanctuary jurisdictions? Well, from the International Association of Chiefs of Police to the major police chiefs association, there is this common argument that police work is easier to do when there is trust within the community. And so I was able to, this week, publish results from a representative survey of undocumented immigrants here in San Diego County. Without getting too technical, there was a survey experiment. Half of the people were told that San Diego Police Department and the San Diego County Sheriffs were working with ICE. Half of the people were told that San Diego Police Department and the county sheriffs were not working with ICE. Would they be more or less, less likely to do things like report crimes to the police? And so let me just get the results for you. Okay, in the circumstance where San Diego Police Department and the San Diego County Sheriff's Department were working with ICE, we see 61% of undocumented immigrants here in San Diego County less likely to report crimes to the police. 43% are less likely to report crimes when they are victims of crime to the police. 70% are less likely to use public services that require them to disclose their personal contact information. This also affects our local economy. 64% are less likely to do business. For example, open up a bank account or get a loan. 68% are less likely to attend public events where the police may be present. For those with children, 43% are less likely to 
enroll their children in after school or daycare programs. And finally, 52% are less likely to look for a new job. And for those who sort of understand what it means to be undocumented, who are working under the table, potentially paid late, potentially subject to poor working conditions, potentially subject to wage th uh, theft, we know how these chilling effects, again, can affect families. So altogether, the data are very clear. When immigrant communities don't have to live in fear, they can thrive. And that benefits all San Diegans and all Californians. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Wong. Uh, next, uh, we have a, a very powerful voice uh, for both counties of San Diego and Imperial. Uh, she is the executive director of the ACLU for both counties. That is Norma Chavez Peterson. Norma Chavez Peterson. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Like I like our Senator De Leon said, I'm Norma Chavez, executive director of ACLU. For those that might not know, our history, ACLU is a national organization that for 98 years have worked through the judicial process, the legislative process, and with many diverse communities across the country to advance and protect the constitutional rights and freedoms that we all share. The ACLU of California has been a strong supporter and advocate of the California Values Act and work closely with the state legislative leaders to make sure that this law um, that ensures that all Californians have access to critical public services, keep our community safe, healthy, and formed regardless of immigration status. I'm very proud today to stand with Senate President Emeritus, sorry, Kevin De Leon, the author of this very important landmark law. All Californians deserve to be treated fairly. Fairness, public integrity, and a sense that we all belong are bedrock American values. These are California values as well. The trust between people and the public institutions that serve us is essential to a strong democracy. If people can't trust public institutions, like hospitals, courthouses, libraries, and schools, our society cannot function fairly or effectively. Public safety is the shared concern of everyone who lives in our region and in our state. Ensuring that there's trust between our communities, including our most vulnerable immigrant brothers and sisters, with law enforcement is crucial for all of our public safety. And I'm not going to share the numbers because you heard from Professor Tom Wong. But we know that California is the nation's most populous and most diverse state and the world's sixth largest economy. We are at the leading edge of creativity and social change. Immigrant innovation, vitality, resilience, and strength are part of our California or California DNA. The California Values Act is a well-named law because it protects our most deeply rooted values. It advances our shared purpose and common destiny as Californians. Like other speakers have said, right now the federal government and this administration is targeting immigrants and refugees. In San Diego County and across the state, we've seen the Trump administration and anti-immigrant, nativist, white supremacy groups pressuring local municipalities and agencies to assist in deporting millions of people and to join the Trump agenda against our communities. The Trump administration is suing our state, and this lawsuit that was filed by the Department of Justice targets not only the California Values Act, but three California statutes that we worked very hard to pass. The Dignity Not Detention Act and the Immigrant Worker Protection Act that our janitor's union helped to lead. All of these three laws are constitutional. The ACLU believes that these laws, this lawsuit from the Department of Justice is completely groundless. First, there is no federal law that requires state and local law enforcement to arrest or detain immigrations for deportation purposes. Second, the United States Constitution protects the state of California's right to determine how our local and state resources are allocated. 
Last week, we heard our County Board of Supervisors voted in a closed session to make San Diego County an accomplice with Trump in this lawsuit against our state. With their votes, Chairwoman Kristen Gaspar, Diane Jacob, and Bill Horn are on the wrong side of history and on the right side of facts. Last Friday, our own SANDAG, our regional planning organization, released a report of re regional crime data from 1980 to 2017, documenting what we all know, that San Diego County continues to be amongst the safest border regions in the nation. We are the safest city. We're a thriving border community. This is in stark contrast to the misinformation and fear-mongering that supervisors Gaspar or Gaspar and Jacob are spreading on their Fox News tour. We must hold them accountable. The California Values Act and the other two laws that I mentioned are not only sound law, they're sound policy. California is fully within our right to keep families together, respect due process rights, and protect against racial profiling by limiting the use of state and local resources in the federal government's mass deportation activities. We expect the ACLU of San Diego, along with our many partners across the state, expect that all 58 counties, local municip municipalities, and public agencies across the great state of California will comply with the California Values Act, which complies with federal law. We will continue to work with the Attorney General Office and other state leaders, as well as our human and civil rights allies, to ensure that every city and county in California not only implements the, the laws fully, because if they do not, we will see them in court. All of us will see them in court, and we will hold them accountable, just like we did last week in the city of Los Alamitos when the ACLU and Endelon and other partners filed a lawsuit the day after the, the city of Alamitos decided to pass an ordinance excluding themselves from enforcing SB 54. That will not be acceptable and we will continue to monitor the implementation of these important laws in our great state and we will take them all to court if we need to. Thank you very much. Okay, we got two more speakers, and then we're done, and then we can open up for Q&A for anyone who's here, or uh, we can do individual uh, interviews of everyone who's here today. Uh, but let me bring up este, el, el, este Father Pepe uh, Neil Wilkinson, who is the pastor uh, from the church just, just a few blocks from here, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, I have gone to Mass there on numerous occasions. I know that Senator Ben Hueso, who lives right down the street over here, over by este, la, la 25, la 26, por la, este, el Market Street. I won't give you his address, but we're por ahí, you know. Uh, he has gone to your, your church uh, since his infancy. So with that, let me get up to our father, Pepe Neil Wilkinson from Our Lady Guadalupe. Buenas tardes. Gracias a todos por venir. Um, we are here because we stand for values. We stand for the values of honorable public officials. More than two-thirds of the voters of San Diego County voted against the man who is preaching hate and, and, and division. More than two-thirds of the people have said that they do not want immigrants deported for no, without cause. We expect our public officials to be honorable to, to represent the people whom they've been elected to serve. We also expect that families will be protected. If we talk about what's legal and what's not legal, Jesus broke the law. So Jesus would have been deported if he weren't crucified. And it's terribly offensive to me to think that I stand before the altar when I do a wedding and I say, lo que Dios acaba de unir no lo separe al hombre a excepción de ice. There's no permission to divide families. Many of these people are the holiest people that I've ever worked with. We need to stand for justice. We need to stand for values of family and faith, values of California. Thank you.
Thank, thank you very much, Father, and thank you very much for your very powerful words. Uh, last but not least, a man who needs no introduction. He's known throughout the country, especially on both sides of the border. F quite frankly, he does God's work uh, by sacrificing himself uh, every day to help folks uh, who are searching for a better life. Uh, last but not least, uh, the executive director of uh, Border Angels, Enrique Morones. Enrique Morones. Enrique. Thank you very much, Senator. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And, and before I uh, continue, I want to recognize, I don't know if you know, Senator, but this beautiful mural that we're standing in front of that says, no border wall, love has no borders. Mm -hmm. The muralist is right over there. That's Salvador Barajas with his lovely wife. And he also did that cross, no border wall, compassion. Yeah, this is his, his mural. And, uh, and also want to recognize, let's, give, let's have a hand for Salvador. One of the original muralists. Yeah. He wants to do. He wants one up here of him, right over here. Yeah, there you go. And, th and we also want to thank the uh, all the people that are gathered around. We have the border angels, who are out every week putting water in the desert so that people don't die. We have uh, 5,000 border angels. Many of them are. Some of them are here today. The San Diego border dreamers. There's Dulce Garcia, Chidaka. She's an immigration attorney, Senator, and Ali Torabi, who's going to be a doctor. He's also a San Diego border dreamer. We've been around for more than 30 years, the Border Angels, and one of the things that we've been doing for the last 13 years is caravans. We've been doing these caravans. Uh, recently, uh, we, most recently, we're supporting the caravan that's arriving in Tijuana right now. Uh, Hugo's been on the caravan. We've had Gaba on the caravan. We support the caravan. One of our caravans several years ago was to bring attention to the deported veterans. So we've been working on these caravans for 13 years. And we're welcoming the migrants right now, the refugees that are arriving in Tijuana at this very moment. It's very important that we not forget what a sanctuary is. There's been sanctuaries since the beginning of time, biblical times. We have the sanctuaries during the, the, the enslavement of our African-American brothers and sisters. The Nazis, when they were killing our, our brothers and sisters, those people were seeking sanctuary. We need to continue to offer sanctuary to our brothers and sisters but not only in words, but in facts, in works, in things that we're actually doing. So, Senator, I'm so delighted that you're back here in Barrio Logan, que estás aquí una vez más en casa, porque esta es tu casa, y todos necesitamos un santuario. Nadie nos va a parar. No Donald Trump, no Tucker Carlson, no Laura Ingram, con los cuales tuve en debate la semana pasada. Y quiero decir que es muy importante para nosotros siempre acordarnos de que todos somos de la misma raza, la raza humana. We're all the same race, the human race. It's time we treat people with dignity and respect, as you always have, Kevin, as you have, Nathan, as other people, Ricardo Griswold del Castillo, Salvador, Dulce, the, the Border Angel people. So we're delighted that you're here with us today. And in the good sense of the word, uh, Kevin De Leon, you are one bad hombre. And so we want to give you one of these uh, bad hombre t-shirts. This is bad hombre like Michael Jackson, bad hombre. So we want to give you one of these. And not to be left out, we also have bad mujer. But you're one bad hombre, and we, and we love having you here. Thank you, thank you for all your work. Y si se puede. Gracias. OK, what we can do is any uh, questions or answers. If not, what we can also do if it's easier. Uh, you have uh, Nathan Fletcher here, obviously Enrique Morones. We have our father from Guadalupe Church. Uh, we have Norma from the ACLU. We have other individuals, uh, wonderful dreamers here as well, uh, available for individual uh, interviews here too. Nuestro este muralista también. Gracias, no nos honras hasta con este mural, reconociendo este la lucha de nuestra gente. I guess we'll go to individual. Or what, what? You want to do individual? We can go individual. Let's go individual for folks. Okay. We'll break it up. Thank you very much, everybody.